So good afternoon, guys. We are in the last chapter of the semester. So this is chapter number thirty-eight. This chapter number thirty-eight is a culmination of everything that you have studied in this semester. We started with Coulomb's law, then we went to electric field, then we talked about uh, potentials, potential energy. We talked about um, properties of material, electrical properties of material. Then ended up with capacitors. That was the electrical part of it. Then we move to magnetism. We talked about magnetic forces, magnetic fields. Uh, then uh, along the way, we talked about Biot-Savart's law. We talked about Faraday's, then Ampere's law. And now in this particular chapter, we are going to uh, get together everything that we have studied and then arrive at four important equations called the Maxwell's equations. Okay. And uh, so let me just start the chapter. The first thing we'll do is we'll consider a region. We'll consider a region of space where there are no sources. You know, the source of an electric field is charge. Source of a magnetic field is current. So let's take a region of space. Okay, You don't have charge. You don't have current within this region. But then because of the electric field and charge, because of the charge and the current outside, there will be magnetic field and there will be electric field in the defined region. Once more, I'll tell you, we are talking about a region of space. Again, I'm telling space, which means we are talking of mu naught and epsilon naught. And in this region, there is no source, no source of electric field, meaning charge, no source of magnetic field, meaning current. Okay? And uh, we are going to write some of the laws that we have studied till now. First thing we'll do is let us write Gauss law for electrostatics. You remember what is Gauss law? So phi E or flux, electric flux is equal to integral E dot dA over a closed, closed surface is equal to charge by epsilon naught in a normal situation. But since there is no source, this part becomes zero. So you get integral E dot dA is zero. That's Gauss law for electrostatics. Now let's write Gauss law for magnetism. When you write Gauss law for magnetism, it is integral B dot dA equal to zero. The right hand side is anyway always going to be zero, irrespective of the, whether there is a source or not, simply because magnetic field lines always form closed loops. So if I take a Gaussian surface with a magnetic source inside, then the number of field lines cutting out will be equal to the number of fields cutting in. Okay, therefore, the right-hand side has to be zero. So this is Gauss law for magnetism. Now let's go to Faraday's law. So how do you write that? Integral E dot d is equal to minus d phi b by dt. So if I have to write this in an English sentence, what will I write? I will write that changing magnetic flux changing magnetic flux that means magnetic flux is changing with time changing magnetic flux gives rise to electric field so this is what i would write in english if i have to write expand this equation in a language in a simple english language so this is your faraday's law of course, Linz law is hidden inside that. That is the reason why you have a minus sign. The change is opposed by the induced EMF. So that's the reason that minus sign is there. Then after that, let us look at a more recent law that you studied, which is the Ampere's law. So Ampere's law is integral B dot dS over a closed loop. It's not a closed surface. It's a closed loop is equal to the current mu naught into the current enclosed, mu naught into the current enclosed by the loop. But then this part is going to be zero because we said that in our region, there is electric field, there is magnetic field, but no source. Therefore, the current has to be zero. So you write integral B dot D is, is zero. Okay, now look at these four equations. You're finding that there is a symmetry between electric field and magnetic field when you write the first two equations. In the first two equations, there is a symmetry. They look like mirrors of each other. But come to the third and fourth equation, you're finding that there is an asymmetry. You're finding that there is an asymmetry. So if there has to be a symmetry, 
how would you write that as a sentence if there has to be a symmetry okay and if you were going to modify your ampere's law then in english how do you think you would have written anyone if faraday's law and ampere's law should look like twins okay then let's say you're modifying your ampere's law to suit your requirement how would you write that that hypothetical equation how will you write in english changing Anyone? magnetic field you use rise to uh, magnetic field changing electric field gives rise to magnetic field. beautiful who said that manov okay manov that's good so this is exactly what people started searching for this is exactly what people started searching for so they started wondering if time dependent electric field can give rise to magnetic field if that is possible then you will be able to rewrite your ampere's law in a form that looks similar to faraday's law and then these four laws would look very symmetric so this is this was the attempt sorry so what was uh, uh, done is before we go to what was done i have to now introduce two terms one is induced magnetic field till now you know induced emf induced electric field that you have seen so now we are going to talk about induced magnetic field and a term called displacement current so for that what we'll do is we'll consider look at the first picture here we'll consider a parallel plate capacitor only thing is in this case the two plates are going to be circular in shape the two plates are going to be circular in shape and then they become part of a circuit okay they are the part of a circuit so you are putting them across a battery and you are going to charge them okay so when you put it across a battery like this and when you charge them you know that the current will be in this direction that's what is indicated here comes like this this is how the circuit will look if a current is flowing in this direction this process is called charging this process is called charging let us first say that initially the two plates don't have any charge they are completely neutral and then you are connecting it to a battery and you are starting the charging process so when you are doing this charging process what happens after some time there will be a deposition of electric negative charges here electrons on the side and a deficiency meaning positive charge on the opposite plate so one plate will slowly start becoming a positive plate and the other will slowly become a negative plate so let's say q is the charge on the plates and i will write that this q is a function of time this q is a function of time because slowly as the charging happens more and more charge separation is happening therefore positive plate and negative plate more and more charges will be there so next what we'll do here is let us try to uh, look at the effect of this so there is a current in the wire this part is a wire okay these are all wires okay so there is going to be a current in the wire and you see the direction of the current also the direction the direction of the current is given like this this is the direction of the current then what you can do here is you can imagine applying ampere's law there you can apply ampere's law and when you apply ampere's law you're going to see you can use your right hand rule and you're going to see that if my current is let us say my thumb direction my current direct my magnetic field forms close loop and given by my finger direction okay so apply your right hand rule to this situation so when you do that you find that around the wire there is magnetic field around the wire there is magnetic field tangential to the fire to the circle so this is what the magnetic field is going to be and if i am interested in finding out what is the magnetic field over this amperian loop i just have to do integral b dot d is equal to mu not into i where i is the current in the wire okay and what is ds ds is that amperian circular loop that you have drawn okay so you know that the left hand side is non zero the right hand side is non zero the right hand side is non zero you know mu not i is non zero which means the left hand side is also non zero which means there is a magnetic field right next what we'll do is we will keep the loop 
look at the next picture we will keep the loop as it is we'll keep the loop as it is now uh okay we'll keep the loop as it is and before we do something i want to go back to my plates again i'll go back to the plates i said charge is being built as a function of time and you know that whenever you have two plates carrying equal and opposite charges there is a uniform electric field between the two plates there is a uniform electric field between the two plates or there is a potential difference that is created between the two plates which is a function of the charge which is directly proportional to the charge so potential difference uh, in uh, in fact uh, leads to electric field so look at the second picture you are seeing that there is an electric field there is an electric field going from the positive plate to the negative plate and it's a uniform electric field so we have shown a series of parallel red color arrows here okay so this is the electric field and you know the formula for this electric field this electric field is going to be given by sigma by 2 epsilon not go to chapter number 28 uh, 26 27 26 27 electric field is sigma by 2 epsilon not where sigma is the charge density or i can write it as q by 2 uh, epsilon not a of course one one second it's not going to be epsilon sigma by 2 epsilon not it will be sigma by epsilon not this two will not be there why two will not be there because one plate will give to will give rise to sigma by 2 epsilon not another plate also will give rise to sigma by 2 epsilon not therefore the sum becomes sigma by epsilon not sigma by epsilon not is q by a by epsilon not so there is an electric field and look at this this electric field is going to be a function of time because the charge is a function of time or in other words between the two plates there is an electric field which is a function of time okay now we are going to do something we'll go back to the wire go back to the wire go back to the wire consider the same amperian loop okay and when you talk of ampere's law we say that if i have an amperian loop like this and if there is a current passing through this amperian loop through the area enclosed by the amperian loop then we said integral b dot ds is equal to mu not into i now what we'll do is we'll keep the rim of the amperian loop as it is we'll keep the rim of the amperian loop as it is but then stretch the area in between stretch the area in between i hope you remember i talked about this in ohms in ampere's law i said if you take a piece of balloon and then put it across your mouth you can just stretch it it can be straight you can keep the shape of your mouth the same and then blow it when you blow what happens the surface just bulges out or if you suck in the uh, surface caves in okay the same thing you will do here i hope you are able to see this it's given in light pink color it's given in light pink color you can see that this from the loop the surface enclosed by the loop is stretched out stretched out like this so that stretched out like this so that it encloses one of the plate so that it encloses one of the plate okay now once more apply your ampere's law when you apply ampere's law to the same loop left hand side is not going to change because after all it is integral b dot ds over the closed loop that will not change but look at the right hand side mu not i should be there but you know that between the two plates there is just vacuum between the two plates there is just vacuum you definitely know that there is no current flowing there you definitely know that there is no current flowing there so current between the two plates is zero or the right hand side of this equation now becomes zero the left hand side is non zero which contradicts your logic i hope you are getting the point you have two plates you connected it to a battery and you are charging it but then between the two plates really there is no current flowing because there is vacuum between the two plates then you will ask then madam how did you even draw this current yeah so i will explain how we drew this current okay so if you have plates like this you remember the current direction is given like this but what is actually flowing you see electrons and where are the electrons flowing the electrons are going to flow in the opposite direction electrons are going to flow in the opposite direction and then get deposited on the other plates so it's not current which is flowing it's actually electrons flowing in the opposite direction so that's possible even if there is a gap between the two plates so now you know that the space between the two plates is not having a current therefore the right hand side of ampere's law equation is zero but the left hand side is certainly not zero which means 
Ampere's law, the way we have written there, is incomplete. We have to modify Ampere's law and write it to explain this contradiction, this apparent contradiction. Okay, or we have to somehow restore Ampere's law. So for that, we go back to the capacitor and say that, yes, the capacitor is being charged. Initially, the charge was zero, then slowly the charge is building up. Therefore, the electric field is also slowly increasing as a function of time, which just means that dE by dt is positive. dE by dt is positive. Electric field is increasing as a function of time. Therefore, dE is positive. Time is anyway. dt is positive. So dE by dt is positive. So between the two plates, if I call this plate as the positive plate and this plate as the negative plate, then between the two plates, there is this electric field and this electric field is increasing as a function of time. And one thing, let the area of the plates be A. Let the area of the plates be A. And remember, this is a uniform field. So instead of talking about electric field, instead of talking about electric field, let us now talk about electric flux. Let us talk about electric flux. So electric flux for that area, okay, for that area. So what we are doing is, you no, know, it's like a cylinder. The two plates are there. There is a cylinder. Just imagine a circular area. And through that area, electric field lines are cutting. Okay, so let us write the flux for that area. That will be integral E dot dA. And let us take our area vector Okay, so meaning we are taking an imaginary surface like this and let's take the area vector also parallel to E vector. And it is uniform everywhere on the circle. Therefore, this becomes E into A. Flux becomes E into A. Okay, therefore now you can talk about d phi E by dt, okay, which will be dE by dt into A. Area is constant. Now, since dE by dt is positive, d phi e by dt is also positive okay or you're going to conclude that in the space between the two plates there is an electric field or an electric flux which is changing as a function of time or there is a time dependent electric field so now you can conclude that it is not as if there is nothing between the two plates between the two plates there is a time dependent flux it is this time dependent flux which is going to be responsible for the magnetic field Okay, or now use your symmetry and say that just like changing electric field and flux set up an electric field, changing mag uh, Faraday's law, changing magnetic field or changing magnetic flux gave rise to an electric field. Similarly, here you can say that changing electric flux or electric field can set up a magnetic field. Okay, so this is the thought process that went into this uh, modification of Ampere's law. Okay, so then you will ask a question, ma'am, how do you know it is not the electric flux that is giving rise to magnetic field and not the changing electric flux? Or, or rather, ma'am, you are telling us, telling us that it is a changing electric flux that is giving rise to the magnetic field. But between the two places, there is an electric field. Now, why not the electric field itself? Maybe the electric field itself is giving rise to a magnetic field. So let's answer that question after a few minutes. But before that, what we'll now do is we will consider the space between the two plates. And just as there was magnetic field here, okay, we'll say that if we have some imaginary any region here with, between the two plates, and if you take an area parallel to the two plates, then you're going to find an, a magnetic field. You're going to find a magnetic field between the two plates also. And how do you get that magnetic field? That magnetic field will be given by Ampere's law. Integral V dot ds is equal to mu naught epsilon naught d phi e by dt. Mu naught epsilon naught d phi e by dt. Till now we said there is a magnetic field because of the changing electric flux. But then we also need to put this epsilon naught. Okay, otherwise, what would you have written? Integral B dot ds is equal to some mu naught into some current. So mu naught would have been there. But then additionally, we are also putting an epsilon naught and then d phi e by dt. 
the need for putting this mu naught and epsilon naught is so that so that it is dimensionally it is dimensionally the same as the left hand side when you write an equation the left hand side and the right hand side should be dimensionally the same so that it can be achieved only if you put that epsilon naught otherwise you know mu naught into d phi e by dt will not have the same unit as integral b dot ds okay so now you have written a new equation for ampere's law okay now the question is does it mean that the old ampere's law is wrong does it mean that this ampere's law is wrong or does it mean that both are correct so that we will see in a few minutes so now as of now we can just come to the conclusion that to create a magnetic field it is possible to create a magnetic field using a current a moving charge per current this you have studied in previous chapters now additionally we are seeing that if you have a time variant electric field if you have an electric field that is changing as a function of time then you can produce a magnetic field this is very very similar to what you have seen in the previous chapters you have seen that static charge can produce an electric field then you saw that changing magnetic flux or magnetic field can create an electric field similarly here you see current and time variant electric flux can give rise to magnetic field so two sources for magnetic field so what we will now do is we'll modify ampere's law and write a new ampere's law incorporating both the ideas incorporating both the ideas we write one equation mu naught i comes from chapter number 33 and this comes from chapter number 38 so put both the fellows there and this equation is called the modified ampere's law this is modified ampere's law okay so the first part say it talks about magnetic field contribution from current second part talks about magnetic field due to a changing uh, changing electric flux changing electric flux Okay. And the first part is magnetostatics. The second part is magnetodynamics. Like the first part, electric field because of charge was electrostatics. Then electric field because of changing magnetic field is electrodynamics. Similarly, here you have magnetostatics and you have magnetodynamics. Okay, next thing is, okay, well, if there is an magnetic field between the two plates in space, when you are charging a capacitor, then what is the direction of this magnetic field? Now we are going to introduce a term called induced magnetic field. We are going to introduce a term called the induced magnetic field. We, we, we introduce the term induced magnetic field because this magnetic field that we are getting doesn't have current as a source. It came because of a changing magnetic field. So it's an induced effect. Therefore, this is called an induced magnetic field. Now the next question to answer is, what's the direction of this magnetic field? Okay, so now what we are going to do is, take the two capacitor plates, put them like this. Take the two plates, now we are going to look at them from here. Okay, so this is your positive plate. This is your positive plate. So you can see that the electric fields will be going like this from the positive to the negative plate. and let capital r be the radius of the plate let capital r be the radius of the plate so we are interested in finding out what is this magnetic field induced magnetic field is there a magnetic field outside is there a magnetic field for r greater than capital r and there is a magnetic field for r less than capital r now, what is the formula for that magnetic field? All these things we have to see in the few minutes. And what is the direction of the magnetic field? The, so what we can do is, the electric field between the plates, the capacitor is uniform and perpendicular to the plates. And the direction is from positive to negative. That's the reason why you are putting those crosses. Okay. Therefore, d phi e by dt is positive. 
If d5 e by dt is positive, then integral b dot ds is also positive. Integral b dot ds is positive because b and ds vector are parallel everywhere. Therefore, for a closed loop, integral b dot ds has to be positive. Okay. And if this has to happen, then your b dot ds has to be given by your Ampere's law formula only. It has to be given by your Ampere's law formula only or the magnetic field has to be clockwise. It has to be clockwise. For this situation, it has to be clockwise. Or just use your right hand rule. And then whatever is the direction of the magnetic field and the wire will be the direction of the magnetic field even between the two plates. So just so uh, as compared to Faraday's law, in Faraday's law, there was a minus sign coming because the induced electric field was opposing the change in magnetic flux. But here that is not the case. So minus sign will not be there in the modified Ampere's law. This is unlike what you see in Faraday's law. Then there is a question. We have been talking of charging. Will the same thing be seen when you are discharging? What is the meaning of discharging? So please remember, when you are putting two plates like this and start the charging, initially no charge, then slowly the charge builds up, the electric field builds up, or d5 by dt is positive. What is discharging? Discharging is complete opposite. You are going to allow the charges to come together again, meaning there will be a current taking these electrons back to the original plate, back to their original plate, or there is going to be a decrease in the charge on the two plates as a function of time. When charge is decreasing as a function of time, then electric field is decreasing as a function of time, or d phi e by dt becomes negative. Therefore, b dot ds is now going to have an opposite direction. B will have an opposite direction. Okay, so that's what happens when you are discharging. Now, before that, we wanted to see if there is a magnetic field outside that circular region. If there is a magnetic field outside, if there is a magnetic field, there is a magnetic field in, inside, induced magnetic field inside. And what will be the formula for that? Let us see. So what we'll do is, first of all, take only the space between the two plates. In the space between the two plates, you know that current is zero. There is no current. OK, therefore, your Ampere's law is only going to be this. You don't have mu0 i, you're going to have only mu0 epsilon naught d phi e by dt. Okay, now let us evaluate the left hand side. And we are now interested in finding out the magnetic field at a small distance from the center, meaning for a small r less than capital R. Capital R is the radius of the plate. So for a distance, small r less than capital R, draw an Ampereian loop. Okay, and then what you do is, Evaluate integral b dot ds. Since b is forming close loop, close circle, b dot ds will be b parallel to ds, and b is the same everywhere. So b comes out of the integral, and integral ds becomes 2 pi r. So b into 2 pi r is the left hand side of the above equation. Now come to the right hand side. The right hand side has got mu naught epsilon d phi e by dt, and you know already that phi e is equal to electric field into pi small r square e into pi small r square why small r square because we are interested in that small area because our amperian loop is enclosing a small area of radius small r so you have to write e into pi small r square okay now when you do that pi r square can come out of the d by dt uh, d by dt and then you get d e by dt into pi r square. This is equal to the left hand side, which is b into 2 pi r. Let us finally get the expression for b, get 2 pi r to the right hand side of the equation. So you will get 1 by 2 mu naught epsilon naught d e by dt into r. We are just writing d e by dt because you know that d e by dt can take positive values, it can take negative values. But we are not interested in finding out the direction we just want the magnitude we just want the magnitude so let's put modulus d by dt into r so you're finding that everything else cancels out so you're finding that the magnetic field is proportional to distance from the center 
induced magnetic field is proportional to the, mag the distance from the center of the plate. Okay, and please remember all this discussion is for small r less than capital R. Okay. Now let us go outside. Let us go to a point outside where small r is greater than capital R. That means you are talking about, see, just imagine it's like you know, two plates are there, and then there is a cylinder cylindrical space which is empty space and you are going to take a point outside and find out if there is a magnetic field induced magnetic field there so what you now do is draw an amperian loop draw an amperian loop okay and then continue to do what you were doing b dot ds okay so the left hand side will be b into 2 pi r b into 2 pi small r where small r is greater than capital r but now come to the right hand side the right hand side if you see mu naught epsilon naught d phi e by dt but where is the flux the flux is only in that area in that area where the plates are there that means pi capital r square because the electric field is also only in this tubular region not outside there is no electric field outside okay therefore when you write the flux it will be e into pi capital r square so when you do db uh, d phi by dt it becomes d by dt into pi capital r square please remember we have done something very very similar in chapter number 34 only thing was there it was faraday's law okay now once more get everything to the right hand side of the equation keeping only b on the left so you get half mu naught epsilon naught d e by d t capital r square by r capital r square by r or you're finding that the magnetic field falls off as distance once you are outside the region of the plates okay so now this entire thing or you are able to understand that changing electric flux can give rise to a magnetic field not only in the region of the electric field even outside that only thing is outside that this induced electric field effect is going to fall off with distance. Okay, now if somewhere if uh, you were to plot B versus, if you were to plot the induced magnetic field versus distance, induced magnetic field versus distance, what would you do? Till you reach capital R, you are finding that the magnetic field is directly proportional to R. So straight line. Then once you reach here, reach the surface, after that it falls off as 1 by r. Okay. Now let me introduce you to the concept of displacement current. So for that, what we do is go back and write your Ampere's modified Ampere's law. They're, they're both the terms are there. Write it. And now just a comparison of these two parts itself shows you that current here is analogous to this part. Or this epsilon naught d phi e by dt will have the unit ampere because it's going to be having the unit of dimensions of current. So it will have a unit ampere. Okay, now this, this part which has got the unit of current, we are going to call that as displacement current we call this part as the displacement current so let's write ampere's law in terms of current now mu naught i plus mu naught i d this i is called the conduction current this i you are finding only in that wire the rest of the circuit not between the two capacitor plates so this i which is outside the capacitor is because of actual current because actual motion because of actual conduction of current Okay, that's why that current is called the conduction current but between the two plates what you have is only a changing uh, electric flux but it has got a dimension of current so we call this current as the displacement current and this displacement current that you are having here is connected to what is called the displacement vector which the ec students will be studying in a paper called emf I have been teaching this paper all along. Let I don't know, in the third year, such a paper is there. I don't know whether I will get a chance to again teach it because now BSc physics is there. We may be asked to take other papers. Otherwise, you know, the history of this one could complete there. 
Okay, so I is the current through the conductor, which is the conduction current, and ID is the current through the dielectric. Very dielectric suddenly come. Free space is also dielectric only. It's an insulator. Okay, so the current through the dielectric is called the displacement current. The, dis the dielectric in this case is the uh, free space. Now, instead of free space, you could also have um, a dielectric material. But then already we started this entire chapter by talking of mu naught and epsilon naught. Therefore, the dielectric is free space. Now, what is this relationship between I and ID? Conduction current and displacement current. What is the relationship? Let us see. So for that, let us first of all talk about the induced field between the plates. This I already told you, sigma by epsilon naught, which is Q by A into 1 by epsilon naught, where A is the area of the plate. A is pi capital R squared. OK, now what you do is you know that this Q is a function of time. Therefore, electric field is a function of time. So let's do dE by dt. What will be dE by dt? It will be 1 by epsilon naught A. This is constant. And then only Q can be differentiated with respect to time. So dQ by dt. You know what is dQ by dt? dQ by dt is current. So you write 1 by epsilon naught A into current. OK, or let us keep only current on one side of the equation and take everything else to the, uh, the left-hand side. Therefore, you get current I equal to epsilon naught A, this is when you take here, epsilon naught A into dE by dt. Now, what you do is club A and dE by dt. You know that E into A is electric flux. Therefore, you get epsilon naught into d phi E by dt. What is this? This is only your displacement current. Or you're finding that the current, the conduction current is equal to the displacement current. The conduction current is equal to the displacement current. Or there is an important result that's coming. What is conduction current? Conduction current is the rate at which the charge is flowing in the conductor. Rate at which the charge is flowing in the conductor. So that's your conduction current. That is going to be equal to the displacement current. So if the conduction current becomes zero, displacement current will become zero. If the conduction current is a maximum, displacement current also is a maximum. And this I equal to ID. Otherwise, you know, there is somewhere at the back of the mind, you know, I'm sure everybody here is feeling a certain discomfort thinking about a current that is flowing, this is your battery, a current that is flowing in this circuit, and there is nothing to carry the current. It doesn't feel very nice. Somewhere it feels odd to think about a current flowing through a circuit which is open. Okay, so now that, that irritant from your brain can be removed when you think about a current called ID flowing in a tube like this. Okay, so this I equal to ID. Or in other words, the concept of continuity of current is retained when you talk about this concept called a displacement current. And of course, to find the magnetic field in the region between the two plates where this ID is there, all you have to do is just apply your Ampere's law only. This ID behaves like a real current when it comes to application of Ampere's law. In application of Ampere's law, I want you to just go to chapter number 33 in Ampere's law. You talked about a current through a large wire. There, how you applied Ampere's law to find the magnetic field inside and outside the wire. The same thing is what we have done here. Okay, so let us see the difference in the situations. One is what happens when the capacitor is fully charged. The capacitor is fully charged means there is no more flow of charge, charge being taken from one plate and deposited on the other, which means the circuit now has no more conduction current. If conduction current is zero, then you know that displacement current is also zero. Or between the two plates, now the electric field has reached a maximum value, it is not changing. d phi e by dt has become zero. Phi has become a constant. Similarly, you can discuss how the situation is when you are charging. When you are charging, there is a current. Electric field is increasing as a function of time. d phi e by dt is positive. And then use your right hand rule to get your d. Now what happens when there is a discharging? When the discharging is happening, 
you are allowing the positive and the separated charges to combine. Combining means what? The electrons will now start flowing in the opposite direction. Flowing in the opposite direction, now the current is in the opposite direction when compared to the charging current. And the electric field, ah, okay. What about the electric field? Try to answer this question. This is my positive plate, this is my negative plate. And now I have a situation where the electrons are going to flow away and reach here. Okay, what about the electric field? Current direction has become opposite as compared to charging. What about the electric field? Will the electric field also be in the opposite direction? Just Q decreases with time, implies E decreases with time. But field direction doesn't change. Field direction doesn't change. The only thing that changes is dE by dt is negative because electric field is reducing with time. Or d phi e by dt is negative, which means the magnetic field that you're going to now get is in the opposite direction as compared to what you got for the charging cycle. Okay, now that we have done all this, we can write the electromagnetic equations after this modification. You can write it in a region where there is electric field and magnetic field, but no current and no charges. Now start writing integral e dot dA equal to zero, fine. Integral b dot dS equal to zero, fine. So symmetry is there. Integral e dot dS is equal to minus d phi by dt. Yes, that didn't change. And now you see the new equation. Integral b dot d is equal to d phi e by dt without a minus sign. Okay, so you are able to see symmetry. Nature loves symmetry. And the search for symmetry by scientists have led to many discoveries. Now you can also write these four equations in a region where there is electric field and magnetic field. And in a region where the sources are also present. Q and I are present. If Q and I are present, how do you write? Integral E dot dA is equal to Q by epsilon naught. Integral B dot dA is zero. The integral E dot dS is equal to my, this doesn't change at all. These two equations will not change. Now come to the last one. You're going to have two parts. Now, what are the salient features of Maxwell's equation? Salient features are symmetry. Symmetry is a salient feature of Maxwell's equation. Symmetry between electric and magnetic field. But then, of course, that there is still that thing which is for which people are still searching. They're trying to see if it is possible to arrive at some form of magnetic monopole. We know that as of now, our, our uh, analogous of positive and negative charge here is North Pole and South Pole. And you know that you cannot separate them. Therefore, as of now, magnetic monopoles don't exist. Of course, you can write an write the four Maxwell's equation imagining that there is magnetic monopole. That's one of the problems given in the book. And then what are, what, are the, what are the other beautiful things of Maxwell's equation? It is Maxwell's equation that predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves. That interesting relationship between electric and magnetic field, which was non-existent as long as you were talking of statics. When you were talking of statics, electric field was by itself, magnetic field was by itself. There was no relationship between the two. But then, the, the connection between the two happens, excuse me. Hello. Hello. Ah, Rashika, you can give it to the security. Ah, hello. Ah, where are you, Rashika? Have you reached? Oh, okay. Are you coming? Ah. Oh, okay. So, are you coming? Oh, are you coming? So, you're not coming. So, okay, fine. Okay. Okay, fine, fine. 
characterize it. Okay, and in the class, no? let's talk later. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, uh, so this is what predicted the existence of electromagnetic field or talked about the exact nature of electromagnetic field. So in an electromagnetic field, there is the connection between magnetic field and electric field when the two are changing. If there is a changing electric field, it gives rise to a magnetic field. A changing magnetic field gives rise to an electric field, which is exactly what is happening in the case of an electromagnetic wave. If this is the way your electric field is changing, then your magnetic field will be perpendicular and changing in the same fashion. Okay, and it is these things that also led to the relationship between the speed of light and the property of the medium. Okay, so in that sense, these four equations become very, very significant. Mm, yeah, and then another beautiful thing about this is that these four equations are consistent with the special theory of relativity. When you are talking of speeds, say right now we have used it for speeds which are much less than the speed of light, where relativity cannot be applied. But then if you can apply to charges which are moving at this close to the speed of light also, you can apply these four equations. They will not change just because speeds are changing. Okay, now let me just take, quickly take you to through, through two problems. You are given a one microfarad parallel plate capacitor. How would you establish an instantaneous displacement current of one milliampere between the plates? So you have to remember that I equal to ID equal to one milliampere. Okay. And dQ by dt is I. Okay, and Q is C into V, where V is the potential difference between the plates and C is the capacitance value. Therefore, you can write current as C into dV by dt. Okay. Now, you rewrite so that, you know, you get only dV by dt on one side. Therefore, it becomes I by C. And you know that I is equal to ID. So, put that ID by C. Okay, and you want a current of 1 milliamp, so write that. And your capacitance is having a capacitance value of 1 microfarad. So when you just solve this, what you're getting is 1 kilo volt per volt per second. So if you are able to change the voltage between the two plates at a rate of 1 kilo volt per second, then you can get a displacement current of 1 milliamp. There is another plate, another problem. This problem I thought I should put here because you shouldn't always think that the plates of capacitor have to be circular for you to do all that discussion. It can have other shapes also. Look at this problem. A parallel plate capacitor has square plate 1.2 mm on side, 1.22 meter on side. Okay. There is a charging current of 1.84 ampere. What is the displacement current? You don't have to do anything. Straight away, you know that I is equal to ID. So 1.84 ampere. The next part is, what is DE by DT between the plates? What is DE by DT between the plates? So for that, what do you do? E is equal to sigma by A, which is Q by, I'm sorry, Q, sigma by epsilon naught, which is Q by A epsilon naught. You know the side of the plate. So this side is also 1.22 meter. So side into side will give you the area. Substitute. Okay. And uh, of course, no, you, you should not uh, substitute. You first of all do DE by DT. DE by DT is 1 by epsilon naught A DQ by DT, which is I by epsilon naught A. Substitute. You get DE by D. The next part of the problem is, what is the displacement current in the square dashed 
between the plates. That is, you have a square here. What is the amount of current that is flowing through this cross section? Is the question. Okay. So for that, what do you do? ID is equal to epsilon naught d phi e by dt, which is you are only going to take that small area. Therefore, d e by dt into a prime into epsilon naught. What is a prime? A prime is this area. Okay. So just put it. D by dt is going to be the same for the entire region because it's a uniform electric field. Okay, for this region, what is B dot ds? What is it? B dot ds is mu naught into Id through that region. Id through that region you already found out. So mu naught into that current. Okay, so I must tell you something now. I must tell you something now. So what I'm telling you is that the syllabus is over. The syllabus for the semester is over. Anything you want to say? So this happens to be your last class. Is there anyone there? 36 I'm seeing. In the two are mine, so only 34 are there. So I can tell your friends, they can continue to sleep from tomorrow. So no more classes, the syllabus is over. I didn't have to take a special class also. Uh, and please, if you have any doubts regarding the model of the exam and all these things, Madam will, she's IC, she will put it on the inter, on the LMS. You can follow that. The end semester exam will be the entire uh, 43 lecture. And then what else is there? Uh, internal marks you already know out of 60 what you got you people know from LMS so I'm sure there is no dispute there so now you have to prepare for 40 marks examination which is a two hour duration examination at the end of the semester I think the date of the exam is already known to you I hope I think it is fifth or eighth or something just look at the LMS so that's about it okay all the best start preparing Thank you. Thank you. So we had a semester without knowing each other. It's so sad. <laughs>